In the past, we brought you a video showing you the five top electric guitars under $500. 505, but it's inflation. So now we're doing six under $600. Check it out. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, make sure to visit our Teespring store linked below for some custom designed t-shirts. And of course, you can feel free to buy something from our store, either online or in person, what have you. So today, Cooper, we're looking at six electric guitars all under $600. And like I said, you know, we've done this in the past. It's like you have 10 guitars under 500. But what we've seen is pricing prices kind of creep up. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also been a huge improvement in, I think, the quality of these electric guitars, some changes with some of the manufacturers, like the one you're holding that we're going to be talking about. And so these are by no means the very best electric guitars, just period. Let's, it's not like these six sit above everything. So before you start with your comments below of like, you didn't include this, fair enough. There's stuff that we just didn't include. And we had some discussions, which we'll kind of mm -hmm. go over between Cooper and I of like which ones we should include and you know, kind of going back and forth. Uh, so there will be some honorable mentions, but let's, let's subtitle this. For 2020, this is six electric guitars under $600 that you might actually be able to get your hands on. What mm -hmm. do you think? Yeah, no, that's very good. Yeah. Lots of different manufacturing, uh, supply chain issues, uh, but these seem to be in somewhat ready supply and they're extremely popular models. So without any further ado, we'll get started. Why don't you start with the one you've got? So I got the uh, Epiphone SG61 with the Maestro. Um, now, just disclaimer, you wanted to hold the Gretsch. It, do you, do you recognize maybe like this pairing that we got going on here? They're like both double cuts, baby. Yes, but we're kind of like the low cost ACDC right now. Yeah, we are. You can be Malcolm. I'll be Angus. <laughs> uh, so I picked this one to uh, be a counterpart to yours. Sweet. But yeah, this is a uh, the SG Standard sixty one with the Maestro, um, and it feels really nice. It's really cool to have this on there. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but is this a newer Epiphone product that you can buy that kind of is the Inspired by Gibson? It is. It's exactly that. Yeah. The Inspired by Gibson kind of original collection. Um, and this is what I really like and, and one of the things that I was hitting on about some changes manufacturers have made. I love that Epiphone has gone ahead and said, you know what, the, these are inspired by Gibson and it is an SG. Yeah. You know, what's that saying? A rose by any other name. But for some reason, <laughs> Epiphone kept calling these G400s and stuff. Yeah. And, I, you know, they were fine guitars, but yeah. I like that they are SGs. Let's call them SGs. And now it allows us to have, like, the 61 SG. And this is effectively an Epiphone version of the same 61 mm -hmm. with the uh, Maestro Vibrato that you can get from Gibson uh, for, you know, hundreds, thousands of dollars less. Um, and, you know, it's got the Kalamazoo headstock going on. It's a very, very cool guitar. Um, you know, fin finish on it is just phenomenal. Yeah, it is. They sound great. They feel great. How's that? The, the if, neck I mean, feel? it feels just like an SG. Um, I think everybody kind of goes for that, like an SG, go for a very thin body, a lot of access on the upper register, um, just a very light guitar. And if you're not trying to go spend a huge amount on a 61 Gibson SG, um, this is such a good option. And Epiphone has been kicking it up. Um, pretty much all year and last year, and we've just been seeing a ton of great stuff come in, and this really goes along with that. Yeah, Epiphone's doing something very specific, and I really like what they're doing, and it comes down to this. If you don't know, Epiphone is older than Gibson. Um, you know, they were kind of Gibson's competitor. Gibson bought them out, and there were some very famous Epiphones played by some very famous people like John Lennon, you know, among yeah. others. And unfortunately for years, Epiphone has just simply meant cheaper Gibson. Mm -hmm. um, and that is effectively true in this particular case. It's yeah. a less expensive version of the same Gibson model. But they're also coming out with USA models of Epiphone yeah. guitars that are you know, several thousand dollars built in the US. Um, and you know, I, I really think that Epiphone's trying to kind of reclaim their identity to a, a certain extent and, uh, and also show the market that they're, they're a premium product, even at this price point. It's yeah. hard, you know, under $600 to find a guitar that good. 
Yeah, um, no, absolutely. That's a really stellar guitar. And that's the same for this one, actually. Yeah. You know, I, I have long been a fan of Gretsch's Electromatic uh, line. I like the changes they've done where it's, you know, the, the little, if you had a problem with like the Epiphone headstock, you were the same person who had a problem with Electromatic being big up here on the headstock. So, you know, Gretsch kind of did away with that. It's real small here on the, the pit guard. But this double jet is fantastic. And we did a video recently yeah. talking about the jet single cut kind of being the most underappreciated single cut. And its double cut counterpart is probably one of the most underappreciated, underappreciated double, double cuts. Yeah. Um, I do love this body. Before we started, I was talking about how this reminds me, the body shape reminds me of, I have a PRS Santana model. You know, very expensive guitar, but it's it's very similar. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, this 22 fret version of this Gretsch is is great. I just love the look of it, kind of like that one. You can't find a flaw in it. It feels great. These Broadtron pickups sound fantastic. It's just a really cool guitar. And I've I've always see what you think about this. I've always thought Gretsch kind of occupies this space among the more popular electric guitar brands as being one of those for like those who are in the know. Yeah, you know, it, it's not as widely, uh, particularly in this lower price point or even more expensive ones. You don't see them as often as Fenders and Gibsons, and yet the the guys who know, yeah, know, and, and they, they love them. They'll yeah. play things like Gretsch's or Rickenbackers. Absolutely, know, yeah, things like that. I just got a Rickenbacker that came in to the store, and I've in the time since been doing all this research on Rickenbacker because I'm just obsessed. I definitely think that those kind of brands, Gretsch, Rickenbacker are underappreciated overall, but then if you are into them, it's like, it kind of checks all the boxes. Yeah, and they've got some cool features like we've talked about before with the master volume, that's just cool. So, very cool guitars. These are definitely two that should be on your list if you're looking at anything in this price range. And I know $600 sounds like a lot. It's really not in the context of guitars. Um, we have some of these that are getting up there. I, this is so light too, look at that, feel that. Because it's chambered, right? Yeah, no, that's Super awesome. light. Anyways. It's maybe lighter than this. <laughs> it's <funny>. Yeah. <laughs> Which maybe is light. crazy. All right, I'm going to get you another one. It's like Christmas time. Because you have to Christmas. defend yourself on this oh, one. Okay. This, tell me you don't like this color. I do. I like this. this. Is, it's cool. I, I pulled this out of the box and was just like, this is so not my normal bag, but I would totally own this guitar. This is so cool. So... Yeah, this is an Ibanez um, RG421. It's available in a few different finishes, but this is awesome. And I, you know, Ibanez just kill, makes the kind of the killer super strat guitar. Mm -hmm. And particularly at the, the lower price ranges, I think that's, you know, they have some incredible premium options, their prestige and their premium line, and now their, their USA made stuff. It's really fantastic stuff that Ibanez is coming out with. But I've always felt that, you know, particularly for a budget guitar, it was hard to find something that played as well, particularly for this genre. So if you are, you know, playing like shred or high gain stuff, you know, the neck on this is very flat. It's not something you and I are probably very yeah. familiar with. You know, I tend to play guitars that have a very kind of chunky, roundy, you know, kind of profile to it and a rounder radius. Whereas Ibanez is the <laughs> antithesis to that. It's a yeah. very flat, uh, very D-shaped neck. It's a very flat fingerboard. But like the others we looked at, I mean, I can't find anything wrong with this guitar. Just the construction of it is fantastic. The heel is incredibly comfortable. And I, I totally dig the looks. And why don't more manufacturers do this, you know, where you can just slide the truss rod cover over? It's pretty nice. It makes sense, that's right? That's nifty. I, I, I've long wondered why that's like an Ibanez feature. Maybe they patented it, but <laughs> it's a very cool kind of, you know, you don't have to get your screwdriver out and make adjustments. Anyways, I dig this. I love that it's a fixed bridge. You know, it's yeah. string through Ibanez. So you can drop D on this or put heavier gauge strings on it, and it, you're, it's going to be very, very stable. You don't have to mess with tremolo. And the two humbuckers, um, you know, you've got your five-way selector, so you've got the in-between tones. Yeah. You just get a lot for your money. And this is, I think, $399. Check our website for pricing on this because it can change. That's alamomusic.com, by the way. But yeah, 399 bucks. That's pretty cool. I think that one falls into a separate category, too, because a lot of these we're talking about, especially going to holiday season or if you're looking to just add, like, you know, start picking up more electric into your collection. This one is much different than pretty much everything else that we've got. 
Um, it is a humbucker electric guitar, like a lot of these, but um, style-wise, neck profile, um, fretboard radius, and finish. If you're looking to add maybe, like if you are a collector and you've already got a couple strats or just other things that you like as your main guitars, but you want to add some color in and something a little more super strat style, yeah. they the even lower level Ibanez guitars are really great quality yeah, the and frets feel great too. get you something to shred on. It's 24 frets. I think it's the only one we have here that's 24 frets. Yeah, it checks off a lot of those boxes. And you know, for years, this goes back to what I was saying at the beginning, um, we have long recommended, a, I think it's the GRX70 uh, Q, it's the quilted top uh, Ibanez, it's about $200 typically. And we have sold so many of those, I, yeah, I've lost count in all the various colors. And we just can't get them right now. I don't know that anybody has them in stock. Um, you know, And so that's, that's one of the unfortunate things we're just having to deal with this year. But it goes to the point that I think, you know, kind of in this price range, there's so many great guitars that Ibanez makes. And this particular one uh, just kind of makes me giddy. I'd, I'd like to own this guitar. So. Yeah. And so over here, something <laughs> that you contrast. might be uh, to contrast, <laughs> uh, kind of in the same vein as the SG. It's also sparkly. Um, yeah, from before. This one is metallic. Uh, gold top, Les Paul. Now, is this the 50s or 60s? That's the 50s. Okay. Um, but and, to your point, they make the 60s, and yeah. they make this in a variety of finishes. Yeah, much like you would expect from Gibson proper um, in their original collection. You have the standard 50s, standard 60s Les Pauls, and this is just the Epiphone version of the same exact thing. And like I said, much like the SG, it's, it's pretty dang close, and it's um, just a very high-quality Epiphone electric guitar. Um, same kind of idea, mahogany body. Mahogany neck, couple humbuckers. Yeah, maple um, cap. Yeah, maple cap. But it's also not super heavy. I mean, it's not terribly heavy. It's um, not as light as the Gretsch, but it's it's manageable. It's comfortable and it's cool. Um, you know, it's an Epiphone, but it's pretty much as close to the Gibson quality as probably they've ever gotten from the Epiphone, you know, line and the inspired by Gibson original collection, all that stuff we're big fans of. So. You know, the only thing that really tips me off a lot of times if I'm playing an Epiphone, and I, by the way, played an Epiphone Les Paul for years, um, was it's the neck profile uh, is the biggest giveaway. It's a little flatter. Yeah. You know, it's, it's almost yeah. like a D shape. Um, and the and the pickups have a, a certain tonal quality to them that I usually pick up on. But they, they really give you that kind of that quintessential... Les Paul, or the one we were looking at earlier, SG feel and sound to them. Um, so I, I love the whole 50s line. I'm I'm partial to gold tops. I think gold yeah. tops are killer, uh, even though I don't own one, but um, want to. So Yeah, we did a video not too long ago comparing the Epiphone and Gibson Les Paul standards, mm -hmm. and a lot of people in that comment section were so convinced that they're Tonally is not that drastic of a difference to justify paying more for the Gibson. Um, and you'll hear in the demos for these, it's a great sounding guitar, great sounding humbuckers. But I have a question for you. You mentioned the neck profile, and that's, for me, the same thing. You pick it up, and that's like if you're blindfolded, you, you'll know that it's right. not the Gibson. Uh, do you know why they, they employ that kind of more D shape, or is it just something that they've that's their thing, or that's a good question. If you don't know, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I just had that put question. Put me on the spot, Cooper. Um, no, it's, I'll tell you my theory on, on yeah. it. I don't have any confirmation from Gibson, but you know, Gibson does not manufacture these instruments overseas themselves. They have a manufacturing partner, just like PRS does with their SC line, just like uh, Fender does with Squire. You know, all of these are made by large companies that make guitars, even the Gretsch, um, under different names, you know, yeah. with, you know, these particular choices. I've picked up some other brands of guitars that have that same neck profile under different brand names. Um, I think one of them was Vintage. Yeah. Um, and, and when I picked it up, I immediately recognized the shape. And so I speculate that they're made by the same okay. overseas manufacturer. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I don't know if it's, I don't recall right now who's doing it. I know it's changed over the years. It might be Samic. It might be uh, World Musical Instruments. I don't. Rem I don't recall specifically, but I think that's where that neck profile comes from because it's pretty similar on both guitars. Yeah. They do have some that differ 
Um, and I think it's when they've specced a particular like vintage neck or it's an artist model. It's usually when I notice the difference. Yeah. You know, to your point on the comments, another comment that comes a lot in these is, well, you can just change out the pickups to Gibson. You can. I don't think that gets you all the way there. I think it gets you probably 95% of the way there. Um, and then, of course, that puts you above the price point we're talking about. So um, this review does not include any modifications to the guitars. That would be several hundred dollars more. So. That's true. Also, I would say, and what I'm about to say is not, it does not cover all guitar fans, all guitar players. Controversial comment. Yeah, they are not created the same. If you're the type of person that would buy an Epiphone and then switch it to Gibson pickups, it seems to me like you would also like want to change the headstock. Like, these are great pickups. These are great guitars. I don't think it's necessary to... Yeah to be changing pickups out and everything because you will get that humbucker tone that you want out of this. But take off the neck and get get it reset, get all your modifications made. You should be proud to play this Epiphone. It's a great guitar. Yeah. That's my little thing. Cool. I'll get you some Two new Two more. Ones. You know what we haven't seen yet? We haven't seen any Fender guitars yet. We actually stopped selling Fenders. No more Fenders. Not! All right. Again, oh, defend look, yourself. Guitars. Yeah. Defend, defend yourself. yourself. I like that. All right. So one of the requirements I had for putting this list together was, of course, the price range, uh, availability. And part of that was I didn't want any limited editions, something that you'd watch this video and next year it's not available. Um, so we try to look for things that are just standard models. Um, so that being said, there, there were some squires I would have loved to have included in this list. And they're kind of your... Um, honorable mentions, and that's their mm. paranormal line. They've got the Thin Line Cabernitas, Baritones, the Cyclones. Those are killer guitars. If, you, cool. if you aren't aware of those, we did a review video on some of those. You can see that link uh, there. Uh, but that's why those, which are like right around the $400 range, are not in this list. This guitar, however, which is in the list, is a newer model. Yes. Um, I like how you just flung whoever checked that off and signed it was okay. We got Cooper doesn't care. Yeah, no worries. Um, so tell us about the one you've got first. So this is the Squire Classic Vibe 70s Stratocaster. Um, Newer to the Classic Vibe series. Yeah, um, which you can tell it's the 70s by that big old headstock, which is super cool. I love, so I've got an old 669 Strat, and I, I've always dug that big old it's font so cool. Stratocaster. That's the only reason, if the if history's correct, the headstock's huge. Just so they could put Stratocaster really big. Real on there. big, yeah. So. But it's very cool. Uh, it's got a great classic vibe. Ah, I see what you did there. <laughs> Yo! Um, the neck is maple with a gloss, and it looks, is that like a vintage tint? It's that a vintage put on tint, there? yeah. Um, laurel fretboard, um, natural finish with the tortoiseshell pick guard, three single coil pickups, and uh, it just feels great. It's a great Stratocaster, and you know, we've talked about classic vibes before on here. They're classic vibes are just classics. Yeah. Um, no, they're really great guitars. My son has a 50s classic vibe Strat. And I've, I've said on our channel before, I'll pick up his guitar from time to time. And when I do, I'm like, this is just a really good yeah. guitar. It plays really, really well. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of theirs. They're... Um, 52 telly I, this is probably one of the funniest things this is what we've had some requests of like hey why don't you do a blindfold test um but then i remember watching anderton's when rob chapman said that a 52 classic vibe was a custom shop telly and i'm like nope <laughs> i don't think i want to put on the, the blindfold and go that route but they're that good you yeah know, blindfolded no, playing it they're that good yeah so no, yeah, for sure, and I think as a Stratocaster, um, there are so many options out there from Fender and from Squire for, say, below $1,000, but the classic vibes, um, just all throughout the line, we've always just had really, really great guitars coming in here um, from all the body shapes, but you got to have a Strat in your top six, under six. You and know. the 70s ones are cool. This is kind of what Gibson's doing where Fender came out with the 70s Venteras mm -hmm. and now they've done the Squire kind of version of yeah. this at a lower price point. So very, very cool. The other Fender we have uh, is the one that we kind of, we kind of not argued over, but we discussed. Yeah. 
Um, because, you know, in the player series, there are a number of great electric guitars. And I was remarking to Cooper that I remember, you know, a time when a made in Mexico Fender Strat was around 500 bucks. And of course, a player Strat now is about 650, which puts it just, or even more than that, I don't remember, but it puts it just out of our budget for this video. But there are some great player uh, guitars. This is the Fender Lead 2. And we debated if it should be this or one of the Mustangs. Uh, to put in this because I really like both guitars. So the Mustang 90 and the regular Mustang are also guitars in this price point that are very strong considerations. Yeah. There were two things that pushed me over on the lead. First of all, I dig the 80s vibe. I love the finishes. This uh, crimson is great. The neon green is really, really cool. Um, I love the smaller body shape of this particular one. It's It's... It's very comfortable, it's very light, the neck plays very fast, but ultimately I love the out of phase option that you get with this switch. So if you're not familiar, you've got your two single coil pickups, and you've got a three way switch that gives you access to either the bridge, both or the neck, but you can also put it out of phase, which gives you a level of versatility that you just don't often find, particularly at this price range. Yeah. So we did a review of the leads, the leads can be found up there. What do you, do you what do you think ultimately of the leads? I mean, we went back and forth. I remember you were saying you yeah. really like the Mustang. I, I do too. I definitely was pulling for the Mustang 90 because I think it's cool to have some P90 options. Yeah. Which, if you haven't, we long ago did a demo on those. P90s, yes. Long time. Um, we've done a P90 tone demo, and I actually long time ago did just a playing video that was never popular on just the Mustang 90. Well, do you remember yeah. we did a, on uh, Gibson's, we compared the Les Paul gold top yeah. humbuckers versus P90s, and in the comments, a lot of people prefer the yeah, P90s. P90s. P90s are just great pickups. They're cool, but the leads, they are newer to be reintroduced to Fender's lineup. They are kind of somewhat of like a hot, new aesthetic thing for Fender, which makes them cool and probably more relevant to, say, the holiday season this year or something. But um, the phase option is something that, you know, you get on ultras, like the Ultra Jazz Master or something. It's very hard to find that on kind of a lower level, lower price level for electrics. But they are very comfortable. Mm -hmm. They look super cool. Um, and the versatility of sound, you know, you can do some 80s stuff, get quacky with the out of phase and out of chorus pedal, and you're good to go. You know? 80s music's coming back, 80s aesthetics are coming back. Um, I like that these guitars have, have made a comeback because they're, they're, they're cool. The three, by the way, is just above $600, which is why we didn't feature it in this video. But that, if you can, you know, you know, uh, just stretch yourself a little bit price range wise, the three is a very cool one to look and at as get well. Get some humbuckers. Yeah. Yeah, humbuckers and ta coil tapping on that one, yep. right? So those are our six under six, so you can get an idea of how great these guitars sound. Cooper's gonna put them through their paces for you, so check it out. Thank you. 
So there you have it. Six electric guitars under $600. These are the very best electric guitars under $600 ever, right, Cooper? Absolutely. Not really. There are great options, but you know, one of the things to look at in this is within these series, um, you know, and the, just kind of these price points by these manufacturers, there are a lot of other options. There's other versions of that SG, different color options of that Les Paul, you know, this and it's, you know, other kind of... Uh, you know, mates from Ibanez, there's, uh, you know, tremolo equipped versions, all of these things. But like I said at the beginning, it's been a weird year. Yeah. It's been a real weird year. And so as you're looking out there, I'm hoping that this video gives you some insight into maybe some models you haven't considered before, maybe like that Gretsch. You can be one of those in the know, so to speak, and really appreciate a great guitar. Um, or this will confirm something you've been looking at. They're all really fantastic options. I don't think when I was growing up, for sure, that a $600 guitar were as good as these. Yeah. True story. Let me ask you, I'll put you on the spot one more time. Sure. If you were going to pick from Will this be under these? my tree? Yeah. Um, you know, out of these, I would probably, I really... <laughs> I really like this guitar. It's not like anything that I own or would typically own, and that's probably why I like it. I, yeah. I was telling Cooper every once in a while, you know, it's like I've got Strats and Tellys and Les Pauls and stuff. And so every once in a while, something from Ibanez, we were just saying it's, there's a pr premium. It's not a prestige. It's a premium Cerulean Blue seven-string guitar. And I'm like, I never play seven-string guitar. I probably would struggle to start with one, but I really like that guitar. Yeah. And would like to own it. Um, so yeah, I, I out of these, I would probably get this guitar. $399. Yeah, that's cool. It's a really good guitar. Super cool. So, how about you? Well, I didn't do this on purpose. We didn't grab these to then say this. and But this be would be, yeah, mine. I My best friend growing up had an Epiphone SG style. And, G400. Yeah, and a Spider Line 6. And I was like, this. first of all, this guy's the coolest guy I've ever known in my life. I'm so jealous, and I had like, I had a Fender Strat and a, a Fender amp, and I was getting tone that I didn't know what to do with. It was so good, and I was like, give me that crunch from the Line 6, and give me that Epiphone, that SG. Um, but yeah, no, this one, it kind of is like a thing where I have to fill that void from my childhood, but I do uh, really enjoy it. It's it, Epiphone, it's that overlap. Yeah. It's that high end, the nice Epiphones sort of eclipse for me, at least the lower end Gibsons. And this, I think, fits into it's that. Kind of knocking camp. it out of the park, yeah. yeah. So these are all great options. Uh, we have these and more on our website at alamomusic.com. And by the way, if you're ever searching within a price range, you can pull up a category, and over on the left hand side of the page, you can specify a particular price and sort our offerings there. We also have people that you can chat with live if you have any questions about some of the guitars, getting specific photos, and things like that. At the end of the day, we're just trying to help you find the right guitar to suit your needs. Because at the end of the day, really, the very best guitar in the world is somewhere under $600. Right. So anyways, we hope you appreciate this video. If you haven't done so, make sure to subscribe. We're trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So we thank every single one of you for doing that and being part of this community. Like the video, comment below, and keep coming back. We'll see you next time. Once again, you guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you want to learn more about the guitar, check out Alamo Music. Pat. Hey, everybody. I love guitar videos just like you do. But guess what? Alamo Music Center has another YouTube channel. You can check out all the piano and keyboard reviews that we have and see more of me. Cooper, do we have another one of those? He's fine. Thank you.